Welcome to the Online Graduate Practicum Forum for Spring 2017. My name is Rachel Stevens and I will be your presenter. I am a graduate student in the Masters of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies program in the Department of Occupational Workforce and Leadership Studies. The title of my practicum study is Discovering Leadership Development. My particular practicum was exciting to me because I was able to work with a national organization that operates a school for at-risk youth. This is an area that I am extremely passionate about, so I was even more excited to assist the organization relaunch an internal leadership training program. Leadership training is something that most people, regardless of industry, go through at some point of their lives. For example, many of the YAL students here today are in multiple leadership training courses through Texas State. Camelot Education's central office is located in Austin, Texas, and is where I spent the majority of my time during the practicum. However, I was lucky enough to get to attend some of the conferences hosted in Austin this semester. Both were amazing experiences. I was responsible for four learning objectives, which were to have a working knowledge of the application and nomination process for a leadership program, attend a conference and participate in the leadership series sessions, interview various educational leaders, and lastly to write a continuing leadership education journal. Completing my practicum internship with Camelot provided me with an opportunity to discover new ideas and concepts, leave a lasting influence on a leadership program, and challenge myself to become a better leader. The practicum highlights for me began with understanding that there must be a strategic program development process. I had been unable to meet with many of Camelot's leadership members for my initial interviews at the beginning of my practicum, like I had originally scheduled. And to ensure that I was still moving forward with my deliverables, I began working on the mission statement and the application process. However, as I began to write these without knowing what they wanted from the academy, I realized they were all just ambiguous statements with no real ties to the organization. Without understanding what the organization needs or wants for the participant as they exit the program, organizing without direction just makes no sense. Interviewing leadership members was one of my favorite objectives to work on during the practicum. I was able to meet with some of the organization's top leadership team members to discuss what they envisioned for the academy. Every interview led to an extremely interesting conversation. One of the main topics of discussion for me was diversity for the participants of the program. As I reviewed the previous rosters, I had learned that only 10% of the former participants in the pro program were women. So I began making and meeting with top female leadership members of the organization as a priority. Their perspective on the program was quite different than the males I had spoken with and gave me great insight on direction for how to write the original documents for the program. A major difference that I noted was that male leadership teams spoke to campus results for those school leaders, whereas the female leader spoke more to the development of the individual to achieve desired results. I cannot move on from the highlight sections without addressing one of the conferences that I attended. At South by Southwest EDU, I saw a keynote presentation by Mike Klebla, a public school teacher for almost 20 years. He explored the paradigm in education by viewing or employing teachers as advisors or business executives. Ed Tech looks at teachers as part of their tools and not much more. Forbes noted that in 2016 top 10 ed tech companies, only one company actually had a teacher on their executive team. Klaiba spoke about utilizing these education industry experts, the educators, as those who should be leading the ed tech revolution. This was an extremely empowering moment for me during the practicum. I've had many doubts about coming from a teaching background and actually being able to move up in organizations to an executive level position. Hearing him correlate teachers' knowledge and perspectives to C-suite executive skills makes perfect sense and helped me realize that my goal is not off base and totally attainable. Some literature highlights I discovered during the practicum were Lunenberg's creating a professional learning community where the need of a mission statement from the lens of an educator was presented. They discussed the importance of a school district and how it can improve if the staff of the district understands the importance of the training program and participates in the creation of the mission and vision statement. 
It will be imperative for Camelot to have clear understanding of the mission and vision of the leadership program for it to be held in the steam by the members of the organization. This promotes the likelihood of greater buy-in to the program and actually achieving its goals. Graham, Bellevue, and Hotchkiss attempt to answer the question of what works in remedying the gap of women's attainment of managerial roles and explores different strategies by corporations to determine what was effective. By referencing this study as a starting point to begin address some of the gender diversity needs of future Camelot leadership, I was able to construct a non-gender bias training application and nomination process. This study is also relevant for the leadership training resource material list, which was one of the other learning objectives. Each campus leader that participates in the program will eventually be hiring and promoting their own campus team. It will be imperative to grow those future members in a non-biased environment as well. Bozak and Skizinski's 2008 research article titled, Am I the Right Candidate? A Self-Obscribed Fit to, of Women and Men to a Leadership Position assisted me in the practicum twofold. It provided guidance as I wrote the application for the organization and on a personal level as I developed a better self-obscribed fit into leadership roles. Bozak and Skizinski's examined whether women's self-use affected their ability to see themselves suitable for leadership positions. They go on further to study if this plays a part in the underrepresented amount of women in leadership positions in today's markets. As I approach the end of my graduate program, I'm greatly interested in moving upward, as noted, to more senior levels. This study gives me insight on how to look past the black and white of a job description and points to highlighting all the skills needed to complete the job. During the practicum, my SWOT reflections landed on the following strength as my dependability. Dependability was noted by my site supervisor as one of my strengths at the close of my practicum. I was really appreciative that my dependability factor was noticed. I work hard to ensure that I don't make others' jobs more difficult and pride myself on being there for others as well. A weakness noted was self-doubt. This is something that I work really hard to overcome. I believe that this noticed during my practicum because I would ask for confirmation on minor decisions or I would question some of my research assumptions. Instead of moving forward on something that I had already made a decision on, I was losing time. Questioning myself cost time on projects and also appeared to others that I was indecisive and sometimes weak. My opportunity noted by my practicum was gaining a supportive mentor. I was able to connect with a couple of the female leadership members at Camelot. I interviewed an executive female early on in the process that really opened the door to some frank and earnest conversations about careers and leadership as a woman. She had offered to work with me as a mentor and I am able to reach out to her with professional questions and I have gained so much insight. This is an incredible offer and an opportunity that I plan to take full advantage of as I move forward professionally. The threat I noted was networking, and I noted this because I had a lack of networking during my practicum. I selected Camelot as my pri site practicum, but I sometimes wonder if not doing an internship at another location would have benefited me more. I currently work for Camelot, and it did limit my exposure time to new and different organizations. Not networking while I had the chance with other industries could potentially hinder my professional development past Camelot. I have decided to remedy this by joining local business nonprofit organizations to be able to stay current with what's up and coming and exposed to new ventures. Being so close to achieving my master's has created the pressure to determine what my next steps are in life. I have considered continuing to advance my career at my current place of employment or utilizing the next year to develop a stronger professional network to move on. I've even considered possibly opening up my own education company. I have always wanted to be in a good position to offer opportunities to others, so one way or the other, I'm going to push past the self-doubt and get there. On the YouTube page below, please indicate your anonymous preference for this practicum by clicking on these two icons. Also, please post your comments or questions in the YouTube comment section below. 
I will respond to your inquiries posted between March 28th and April 10th through this webpage.